Hi, I'm Allie Sealander with UTD Geo News, and I'm here to tell you about a magnitude 7.4 earthquake that shook Mexico on the morning of June 23, 2020. The earthquake occurred off the coast of Oaxaca in southern Mexico. Mexico has 32 states, Oaxaca being the fifth largest in area and the 10th most populous, including many indigenous peoples such as the Zapotec and the Mixtec. Oaxaca is a rugged land that is also one of the most biodiverse areas in all of Mexico. The magnitude 7.4 earthquake epicenter was in a rural area about 90 miles away from the capital city, Oaxaca. It shook the entire area and was felt even 300 miles away in Mexico City. It damaged homes and buildings, and unfortunately, as of this recording, it has been reported that at least seven people have been killed. This earthquake was caused by the convergence of two plates, the Oceanic Cocos Plate and the Continental North American Plate. Just offshore of Oaxaca, the Cocos Plate begins to slide underneath the North American Plate in a process called subduction. The interaction between these two plates causes a zone of earthquakes where the two plates start to grind against each other. Subduction zones are where the most powerful earthquakes occur, with nine of the 10 largest earthquakes over the last century occurring at subduction zones. Earthquakes can occur as deep as 700 kilometers in the earth, but it's the ones that occur closer to the surface that are the most dangerous. The rupture that caused the Waka earthquake occurred at just 26 kilometers below the surface, not far from the subducting Cocos Plate. Earthquakes we've covered in previous GeoNews episodes have occurred because of faulting due to stretching or strike-slip motion. The Oaxaca earthquake was different because it was caused by compression associated with the subduction of the Cocos Plate beneath the North American Plate. One result of this compression is reverse faulting. This is where the block above a fault plane moves upward relative to the block below. So how do we know these things? Basically, scientists use information from many seismic stations that generate graphics called fault plane solutions that show the orientation of fault planes and stresses. These are sometimes called beach balls. The different types of fault motions produce different beach balls that geoscientists can readily recognize as strike slip, normal, or reverse faulting. The Wauka earthquake generated a compressional or reverse faulting beach ball. This earthquake was bad, but it could have been worse. Earthquakes in what geoscientists call the seismogenic zone, 20 to 40 kilometers deep in the subduction zone, are the most powerful on Earth. This is where the 2004 Sumatra earthquake that killed a quarter of a million people occurred, as well as the magnitude 9.0 earthquake that hit Japan in 2011 that killed 16,000 people. Most deaths were the result of tsunamis that these monster earthquakes also caused. It is these kinds of earthquakes that have geoscientists nervous about what is possible to happen in the subduction zone of the Pacific Northwest. Let's hope nothing like that happens for a long, long time. I'm Allie Sealander with UTD Geo News, and I'll see you next time.